Hi everybody and welcome to the Hyannis Honeymooners. Today's date is Monday, March 18th, 2019. This is Pam Scannell. Hello. I'm Steve Scannell, Pam and Steve. And uh, the title of this show is Four Year and Four Day Anniversary. We've been married. We're still on a honeymoon. Yep. No doubt about it. Yep. <laughs> okay. And we we celebrate a lot. Yeah. We like we do. to go for a ride. And dreaming, as most of you know, it's I've heard people say, you know, it's not healthy to dream, but that's not true. It's healthy to dream. God with the big G wants us to dream. Yeah, I agree. I do quite a bit of it. I and do that's what too. kept me back in second grade. Said so you can't keep looking out the window. You gotta, you know, concentrate on your work. I was looking at the clouds, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was their excuse for keeping this genius back. Yeah, I agree. He's a genius. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> that's funny. I okay. Agree. Show number I didn't four. Know right away. Show number four. Hyannis honeymooners. Aren't you wonderful? Thank you, honey. You're welcome. So we celebrate a lot. We like to go for rides. And one thing we're dreaming and planning of is moving to Florida. Yes. So we do things like uh, we go into the real estate and we would like to buy real estate down there in Florida yeah. and then fix it up. And basically that's impossible under the current structure because we are on uh, Section 8 housing. And I had my Section 8, and then you had yours, and then we got married, and then I dropped mine because we couldn't have two. Mm -hmm. But I had it. I had the full thing, just like what you have. Right. And we met at Bay Bridge, obviously, many years ago. Mm-hmm. And we were engaged long, long, many years ago. Yep. And then that didn't <laughs> gel. It didn't I set. I got cold feet. <laughs> All right, my fault. Anyway... Um, I was pushing was pretty stupid. hard. I was pushing pretty hard to get married and get you down the aisle, but yeah. you put the brakes on, but that's okay. Here we are. Now, if we go to Florida and buy property, let's say we couldn't do that with Section 8 unless, as I explained to you, we set up a trust. And what I want to do is set up two trusts because our situation is the situation that many people... Uh, are in that are clubhouse people. We can't go to Florida because, you know, they don't want to let their clients go, number one. Number two, there's nobody helping them to do that, and that would be us. We could get them a ride down there in our truck. We haven't got the truck yet, but we could get a truck and get them moved and get them settled into um, either an apartment, Section 8 apartment, inspected and all that or a section 8 little home or a little cottage or manufactured home or what have you now Pam and I like to look around at the real estate down there and it's much mm -hmm. more inexpensive than the real estate here uh, on Cape Cod and so I'm from a real estate family thinking geez I can get into this and you know we can all do well if we have a trust set up for all the members, I've got it set up this way. All the clubhouse members should have a member and staff trust, and that would be called member and staff trustees. And we have an appointment to see a lawyer about this. Mm -hmm. And then I want to get a trust set up for, for Pam, um, who's more, I think, more of a legitimate clubhouse member than I am. I never thought I was legitimate, and I always said, hey, I'm not mentally ill, but I'll, I'll hang around and do what I can. And what that meant was I had under my belt the fisheries system at that time when I came into Baybridge and I was making 20 bucks an hour working on boats. And so I said, okay, if they're going to play hardball, I'll go into the system, see what I can do. And I thought, okay, cocky as I am, because I'm Irish, you know. I said, three years, and I got this nailed. Three years, it's all it's going to take, and this is a done deal. I'll redesign all these social services systems. Well, I have done that, but it's been more like, how many years? It's been more like uh, 
uh, going on 20 years, not three years. I'm not that good, but I have gotten it done. And that's called town nurse based system. A lot of things plug into that. Clubhouse plugs into that. Job in a bunk plugs into that. Now these um, trustees will plug in and the uh, member and staff trustees, which is the overarching trust that can work on real estate, build up a real estate uh, empire for the members and staff. Now I decided to include the staff because staff might want to retire with us and work part time down there in Florida at the residences and clubhouses which may be on site, let's say in a large development if the trustees bought into let's say 40 acres and and we got together and we got the right people involved and had a good design and built some uh, some nice little homes on 40 acres you know call it you know maybe 60 homes if we could nice little cottages and then a clubhouse on site and also a uh, crisis center slash um, a nursing home on site for both staff and members. Uh, it's going to be worked out how we do this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it can be done. And it would be the best thing for the clubhouse members and staff. The agencies, well, not so much, I think, because they have a hard time shifting gears and coping with uh, what doesn't fall into the category of uh, good for them, they have a tough time with. But for the, uh, for the legitimate clients, I plan on uh, setting us all up. Okay, that's my mission here. Mm -hmm. So, MAST, member and staff trustees. And we would, uh, we would through this uh, vehicle, Okay, it's a trust vehicle. It could be a partnership or a corporation if you're understanding the law. But a trust is what you want for your family members that have a club member. Um, and they want to do right by their uh, God and by their family and their country and community, then they can get involved here. And uh, if I have my way, this won't turn into a profit center for pencil pushers because members and staff working together on this with some legal help, definitely, some good legal minds and some good legal help, good real estate help, and, you know, planning, et cetera, et cetera, good mm -hmm. real estate help, uh, we can really have something. And I think the territory would be boundless worldwide. But for now, let's concentrate on Florida and mm -hmm. then expand it to you know, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, and the warm areas where a club member may want to gravitate to with a particular clubhouse in a community. You may want an early retirement. When you're 50, you may want to be a snowbird. You know, why shouldn't we, the disabled people of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New England, New York, Pennsylvania, etc. I mean, why shouldn't we be snowbirds? Why shouldn't you want that for us? to go down in the winter and come up in the summer. You know, that seems to be the lifestyle. Okay, mm -hmm. so the Hyannis Honeymooners, that's what we're up to, moving to Florida. Nothing yeah. is simple because for us to rent Section 8, we could just go down and do that. But what about the rest of us members, right? It might be tough. Mm -hmm. So Pam, tell us where you want to settle in Florida, where you want us to settle. Well, I want it to be God's divine will, and I think God's, uh, we got the green light again about going down to Florida. That's one thing. And um, I'm thinking like Fort Pierce, I think is very reasonable in price. Um, Okeechobee, we like Okeechobee. Um, Port St. Lucie would be ideal because it would be near my dad. Um, Near Jensen Beach, I think that's part of Port St. Lucie. Possibly, well, um, what do you call that? The the Keys. Yeah. Well, I've lived down there in the Keys many, many years ago, so I can vouch for Stock Island. And there's a little community college I might like to go to if we land up there. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so we have done a trip around Lake Okeechobee. Yep. And we've gone up into Buckhead, okay. Buckhead Ridge, looked around, talked to a bunch of people around there. Mm -hmm. We've talked to a bunch of people and I've scouted out a nice boatyard there where I could fit in. Right. That is down by uh, uh, Fort Pierce. What do you call that Stewart? boatyard? No, Stewart's way down here. Uh, Fort Pierce uh, Cracker Boy Boatyard. And that's a boatyard where they have a big travel lift and forklift, et cetera, and they can get a boat up and you can mm -hmm. work on it yourself as the owner or contractors can come in or they can do some work too at the yard. But that's a nice way to run a boatyard down there in Fort Pierce. I What's talked it to called? A bunch Cracker of people. what? Cracker Boy. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also looked and we I kind of fell in love with this Yankee Town area up here way yeah. up on the west coast. It's a beautiful wilderness area. And there are a couple of clubhouses right around here. And our ex-director of Cove Club, Jen Dos Santos, mm -hmm. runs a clubhouse right down there. Yep. Um, What's the name of that clubhouse? I forgot. But it's down Me in uh, Hernando, I think. And, we're, and that's a county. And we would be up possibly in Citrus and they have a clubhouse here called Lighthouse Clubhouse. That's, uh, you know, it may not... Is that where Jen works? No, she works down here in Hernando, oh. somewhere down there. Hermosa and what's that Springs, other clubhouse called? Lighthouse. So I think there's seven or eight clubhouses down in Florida. So we are big clubhouse people, right? Yeah. We're big. And that's part of our, let's say, political advocacy. Yeah. You know, in the social services and you've been doing it for years longer than I have and I've been doing it for years too mm -hmm. and so what else did we look at we looked at somewhere up here but I forget where it was it was kind of nice territory up in there Gulf of Mexico yeah um, anyway I need a boat shop Mm -hmm. or a shop that I can work on a boat or two or three. Mm -hmm. Maybe a crew that can do boats and work for the uh, member and staff trustees. Um, you know, bringing a property up and then not flipping it, but just, you know, holding it for the rental purpose of renting to us clubhouse people, Section 8 renters, you know, mm -hmm. rentals. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so, anyway, what else have we got going on here? Where are, where are the notes here? Okay. Let's see. So, on it, oh, our anniversary. Can you explain what we did for our anniversary? Yeah, we went to Longfellow's Pub. Um, Kevin, one of my brothers, told me about that. Kevin is up there rejoicing now. Um, Longfellow's Pub, it's in, uh, I think, Yarmouth. And we had prime rib, and it was very good. And the day before that, we had ribs from the Dennis Public Market, which we like to do. It's really nice. Um, and we went to Sisuit Harbor to have the enjoy the, the ribs. Um, we went to P-Town. I think that was about two weeks ago. We went to, um, on the way back from P-Town, we went to Wellfleet, McDonald was there. And you wanna tell him about you getting called up the front? Oh, uh, I got called up, you know, he could see I was in need, okay? And so he had me up there. You were readily going up for the altar call and I just sat down, you know, and sometimes I was kinda slouching around and probably he could smell a scoffer from a mile away, you know, and uh, not that I scoff at his work, I certainly do not, but maybe I'm getting more bored than most at that, attended by the, many pastors were there, and very, very uh, seasoned, let's say, the whole Yeah, that's the whole what, that was the word I was thinking of. Was filled. Thank you. So, and I'm, Laura was there, who runs Coffee House in, is that West Dennis? Yep. I keep getting it mixed Destiny up. Destiny Coffee House. Destiny Coffee House in West Dennis on Fridays 
is a good place to go to a coffee house. Oops, sorry. Pray about that. Um, and that's for 7 o'clock. I think it goes to 7 to 10. Fridays. Fridays. Yeah. So we went on our honeymoon originally to Plymouth and then to Newport. So once in a while we go to Plymouth. And rarely, maybe we've been a couple of times back to Newport. But we like to go to Plymouth. We love to go to the canal. Want to tell about that trip, honey? Uh, yeah, that was really good. We had a um, chicken, rotisserie chicken, and um, we saw a, sh a ship earlier. I forget where we were in Sandwich, I think. And Steve wanted to wait for that ship to come through the canal, and I was kind of edging him. I was pretty well. I wanted out of there. I didn't think. I thought the ship either went. I figured it went by already, but it hadn't gone by. So we got to see the ship. And we, we saw the train, too, before the ship. We were watching the train. That was very interesting to watch, the train. The trash train. It yep. doesn't take much to get us excited, apparently. No, no. And this boat was pretty big. It was an S SO tanker, I think. It pr probably was 400 foot. It was a big boat, big ship. Yep. And so I saw that coming when we were at, what was that, Silver Beach? Because this so. is your territory. You've lived over there. Yeah, Falmouth. Yeah, and Bourne. Falmouth and Bourne. And Red River Beach, we go to that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We love Red River Beach. And we previously, I think that day, went to Woods Hole, didn't we? So I forgot to yeah, mention that. We, we like did. to go to Woods Hole once in a while. Yeah, Woods Hole. And I was going to get a big old life raft that was next to the dumpster and I didn't grab it so congratulate me I'm kind of a junk collector yeah we're trying to downsize yeah. we, we, we gotta get big boxes and start packing our stuff yeah we need to downsize so we'd like to go to Florida but we may go to Florida and be um, still stand where we are and just be as our job making trips for this member and staff um, trustees if we can get this set up then we'll get a truck and that'll take care of the moving of people down there and hopefully it'll be a truck we can use for the construction and uh, uh, rehabbing of a property I want to start really small there are properties there that can be had for believe it or not uh, Twenty to thirty to forty thousand dollars, fifty to sixty thousand um, dollars for a property, and we're not interested in homeowners associations at all, um, right, hon? Mm -hmm. So we know what we want, and we've been looking around, mm -hmm. and we just need the legal help to get it kind of functionable to start. So Off that, the ground. Yeah. That would be a trust for you, maybe a trust for you and me, but a trust for you for sure, and then a trust for all the clubhouse and staff members. Or they could be an agency member too, as long as you're qualified to, uh, let's say, um, be at the clubhouse as a staff member. These are agency people as well, you know. Um, so... That is what we've been up to. And we have a nice little car. You want to yeah. tell about your, the car, honey? Yeah, the car is really nice. It's a Hyundai Accent. It's 2011. I think 11. And we just put it in. We had to pay almost $400 for... Over. Over $400 for repairs. Uh, it's very good on gas. You'd think the size of it wouldn't be very comfortable going to Florida, but it's doable. It's not that bad. It's it's rather comfortable, actually. Yep, it's a great handling vehicle. I think 50 years ago, there's Dave. Yeah. 50 years ago, if you had such a car on the road, it would be the Maserati. This thing handles like uh, a sports car. It handles, it's very tight. Mm -hmm. And I feel comfortable on the highway with this little car, this uh, Hyundai Accent. Yep. And I was talking to the parts man. He might get one too because he likes right, it too. Right. No, the parts man. He was the. Uh, he was the. Uh, Receptionist. 
No. No, he worked at the uh, maintenance. He's uh, the guy that does all the uh, maintenance stuff. He runs that department. So oh, okay. He likes it a lot, too. He likes these little Hyundais. Yep. They are a very good car. Yeah, they are. And this one of ours has uh, 202,000 miles on it now. But we're keeping it up, and it's been... It's mm -hmm. been good. It's never broken down on us, really. We've done everything they've told us to do. You know. And build and develop a stove, uh, store small. Um, I see this note. Build and develop store small. Oh, start small. Start small, sorry. Right, that's the key. So if we can get the legal help, then we can start small. And that would mean we would get a place, uh, the trustees would purchase real estate and rent to someone with Section 8, not us, because we'll stay here until at least the first three or four people get set up. That's what I was thinking. Mm. And then we'll be snowbirds doing it, basically. We'll be back and forth. What we love to do is go for a ride, and in this case, we'll be driving a little truck, maybe with a trailer, mm -hmm and uh, moving somebody in the clubhouse, some clubhouse people down there to Florida or Georgia or wherever they, wherever we are purchasing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good plan. It is, and then this says boat shop based crew. A boat shop based crew would be if we're rehabbing a, let's say, if we're in an area, let's say Fort Pierce, and we've got some snowbirds that are in construction that want to come down for two or three months and work. And maybe they even have a family member as a, that's in the clubhouse, right? Mm -hmm. So they could be uh, working Excuse on their me. contribution mm -hmm. to the trustees. Now, if guys can work on boats, they can work on houses. If they can work on houses, they can work on boats. It's just work. A lot of guys can do all different kind of work, like me. You know, I've been in the construction and boat trades. Kind of a jack of all trades. And a master of none. That's what they say. Uh, yeah, we used to work for Bob Baker on Nantucket. And we did, um, we did digging under old houses and putting in new foundations and renovating buildings and roofing and sidewall and some carpentry. And... And then I've worked at boatyards and worked on my own boats basically all my life. Five minutes. Um, so if we start small with that kind of, uh, with that kind of Baby a thing, steps. Baby steps first, right. You get the, you let people know this is what we want to do. We hash it out with clubhouse people, members and staff. No, the problem is the agencies would be probably, it wouldn't be in their interest. But maybe they can see an angle where it might work for them, but, you know, definitely losing their uh, clientele would not be in their best interest, right? But maybe, uh, maybe there's some angle there that I'm missing. And prayer and pizza boat shops. Oh, yeah, prayer and pizza boat shops. That's what we've decided to name these little boat shops, which we can produce um, parts for the marine technologies and educational programs, the sailing programs. So this would be putting disabled people to work, putting a lot of different people to work, building these stock class boats. And I did have here, yeah, I set aside this here. So this is, this says Illyrian class sloop. And this is page 114 of the Wooden Boat Magazine. You don't have to write that down. Okay. It's uh, Wooden Boat Magazine, January and February. It's not the last issue. It's the issue before that. And the world's finest sailboat. And this is the boat that I worked on the crew. I worked on two crews for this particular boat. Mm -hmm. I worked on the Sanford Boat Crew. And I worked for a boat builder named Matt Reeves. And I worked for a cabinet maker named John Arakawa, too. And they all, all of us worked on these boats. So that's the Sanford Boat Company, Alfie Sanford. And 
the phone number is 508-228-4108. If you're in the Yacht Club world, what you want to do is get together with your community and educational people and say, what would be the ideal boat for our kids, a good safe boat, that can also work in conjunction with, um, I don't want to say interval ownership, but it's called uh, something else in the boating world, fractional ownership, syndicate. Sometimes bigger boats are owned in syndicate. They share mm -hmm. the ownership and maintenance, etc. So I think that's the way to go. And as I explained on another show, it's really important to get it right and you want to talk to the right people that can design these boats and get a lot of people together. I believe in uh, hot molding because these would be good wooden hulls that would be um, impervious to rot, like the looters, lutters or looters boats, and they're still valued today because they were hot molded. As good as cold molding is, it might be the way to go, I'm not sure, but hot molding would give you a a very uh, long-lived hull. But we must be coming down on the time to Yeah, I think it's time to it wrap up it here. up. But let's, let's wait for Jamie to give us the one minute here. Or, or uh, rather, Dave Malchman, our director. I see him back there. Yep. Okay, we do have the one minute here. Thank you, Dave. So the purpose of the prayer and pizza boat shops would be to build parts and build hulls and there'd be many of these boat shops doing this so that if I'm running a boat shop in Harwich, building oars and skiffs and parts for this boat here, and uh, that would work. It would help disabled people to be employed and it would help the kids that are in the sail programs and the kids can get working on these boats too. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what the Hyannis Honeymooners are up to. That's it. <laughs> Thanks for Thank watching. You. Thank you.